So let's talk about America losing its grip over the global economy. Uh, America has been intensifying its pressure on India to sanction Russia. America wants the whole world to sanction Russia because America wants to economically isolate and suffocate Russia. India is not listening to this. India is not abiding by this. India continues to increase its purchasing of Russian oil and also its purchasing of Russian sunflower seed oil. Europe is in a difficult predicament where on one side, it's getting pressure from America to sanction Russia, but at the same time, Europe is reliant upon Russian oil. Turkey is also in a similar predicament. On one side, it's getting pressure from America to sanction Russia, to take a side against Russia, but at the same time, Turkey is reliant upon Russian natural gas. So, what's really happening? Most countries are not partaking in America's crusade against Russia. Most countries are not partaking in America's crusade to sanction Russia. So America is losing its grip. Serbia just recently purchased Chinese missiles. <laughs> and uh, uh, China sent a plane to Serbia in a somewhat secretive manner to deliver the missiles to them. So there are people within America's geopolitical think tank industry that are very upset with Serbia. And just recently I read an article, uh, today I read an article, uh, it was published by, I think it's a website called Serbian Monitor, the Serbia Monitor. And there is an American analyst who is with uh, the Foreign Policy Research Institute, uh, Eurasia Program. His name is Richard Kramer, and he says, The time has come to openly regard the Republic of Serbia for what it is, a stalwart Russian and Chinese ally run by a semi-authoritarian government that proactively pursues ideologically irredentist territorial expansion in the Western Balkans translation. They're buying Chinese stuff. They're getting too close to China. They're too close to Russia. They need to buy American stuff and get close to us and be our proxy. And there is an interesting phenomena that's happening in Germany where there's a lot of talk about whether or not Germany should partake in sanctioning Russia. But at the same time, Germany is reliant on Russian oil, Russian natural gas. So what does it do? What does it do? If the war continues to escalate, the pressure on Germany to sanction Russia is going to intensify. And if Germany acquiesces and, uh, and uh, decides to sanction Russia, well, that's going to weaken the euro. And it could break the euro. So we are continuously seeing the world changing. We could one day see the euro become non-existent. We could actually one day see European countries uh, break off into possibly two different blocks, the Northern Block and the Southern Block. And uh, uh, Yanis Varoufakis talked about this back in 2017. Um, he talked about how if the euro were to disappear for some reason, then there would be a Berlin-style wall built between uh, North and uh, South, Northern and Southern Europe, dividing Northern and Southern Europe. Uh, it would go right across, uh, I want to say, the Alps, and it would split the south from the north. And we could one day see that. We see Marine Le Pen. She is very popular. She is uh, very close to, to beating uh, Macron. I'm not saying she's going to. But even if Le Pen loses, even if Le Pen loses, the fact that she would be so close to a victory would tell us something about France. It would tell us that people in France are also against globalism. They are also against the American neoliberal world order. Um, because Le Pen wants to... I mean, one of her ideas, one of her... A, a part of her political uh, um, envisioning is that France would gradually break away from the North Atlantic Alliance. Uh, and she has also talked about getting closer to Russia. 
So the fact that Le Pen, someone like her, someone with her worldview, her ideology is so popular, tells me that a lot, a lot of people in France are against America. They're against NATO. And this is really a fact about France. There are a ton of people, even though France is a major member of NATO, there are a lot of people in France who hate America, who are against globalism, who are against NATO. There's a ton. And you can really see this in uh, France's media. There are a lot of uh, people in the French media. There are a lot of French publications that are very critical of NATO. There were a lot of French journalists who were very critical of NATO's policy in Syria. And so we're seeing the world changing. And that's really quite conspicuous. It's really obvious. We're seeing the world changing. The fact that you've had so many nationalistic parties rising up, becoming popular, becoming mainstream parties, all of this tells us that the new the the world order that the world has become accustomed to since the end of the Second World War, since the Pope, since after the Second World War, this world that we have become accustomed to, that we have grown accustomed to, is breaking apart, uh, and it's morphing into something else. It's morphing into a Frankenstein. Um, if the euro were to fall because of economic instability in the European Union and people decide to just go back to their past currencies, the Germans go back to uh, the mark, the French go back to the franc, etc., etc., uh, then you would most definitely see um, the rise of a... Uh, a purely uh, a German superpower. It would be Germany, and then you would have um, all the other little European countries that are very afraid of Germany join it or decide to submit themselves to it. Um, and really, that's what the EU is. I mean, economically speaking, that's what the EU is. Uh, it's Germany being the biggest economic powerhouse in Europe and the other countries um, being, uh, in a way, subservient to Germany or really being under uh, Germany's economic power. Uh, but because the world is becoming more militaristic, more unstable, and we're, we've, we've seen the rise of German uh, of uh, Russian militarism, we've seen Russia invade different countries, um, and because it's so cl because Ukraine is so close to to Germany, um, Germans have become more and more uh, tolerant, more and more open to the idea of a militarily powerful Germany. So we're seeing that. Um, and in the midst of this sort of political climate, we have seen Germany do things contrary to American desires, such as uh, building the Nord Stream 2 pipeline with Russia so as to get natural gas directly into Germany from Russia. The Americans were very upset about this. They began to sanction European companies that were involved in this project. And... Um, this was a sign of Germany going rogue. It was a sign of Germany being wanting to be independent from American dictates. Uh, we've seen this with Turkey, with Turkey purchasing the Russian S-400 and uh, the Americans not liking this at all and saying, Turkey, you better not do this, and Turkey just giving them the big middle finger and doing it anyway. Um, so we're, 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 we're seeing this with India. You know, India continuously increasing its purchasing of Russian oil, Russian sunflower seed oil, and not caring at all with the Biden administration trying to pressure India to stop doing this. And India says, no, we're not going to do this. And America is in a tight position with India because on one hand, America needs India as a check against China because India hates China. But at the same time, India is very economically close to Russia. And it's continuously deepening uh, those economic ties with, with Russia. So what's America going to do? Is it going to anger the Indians to the point where it completely loses India? Well, it doesn't want to do that because it needs India as a check against China. So, and, I, and India obviously knows this, and India is doing what it wishes. Um, and I think that's how... I think that's how... Uh, Putin sees America now. I think the reason why Putin took Crimea without any sort of worry, regardless of the sanctions, and the reason why Putin has just decided to just invade Ukraine without any sort of worrying about 
American or European sanctions, this really shows us how Putin sees America. Putin sees America as a dying empire. Uh, they used to call the Ottoman Empire, uh, well, before the Ottoman Empire fell, they called it the dying man or the sick man of Europe. That's what they called the Ottoman Empire because it was indeed a dying old empire. And that's what America is. America is a diminishing empire. It's declining. Now, maybe this war in Ukraine is giving it a little bit of a revival. Maybe it's revitalizing NATO a bit because it's showing, look, NATO has a lot of camaraderie. It has a lot of unity. But I think for the most part, this will be a facade because regardless of all the hoorah about Ukraine and regardless of all of the Slavu Ukrainas that we keep hearing, uh, regardless of all of the seeming camaraderie, at the same time, a huge chunk of the French population doesn't really care about NATO, hence why there's so much popularity for Le Pen. Um, the fact that most countries are not even partaking in America's cause to sanction Russia and to economically isolate Russia. Um, the fact that a, 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 a huge country like India is willing to disobey American demands and continue to do business, and not only continue, but rub it into the face of America and increase its purchasing of Russian oil. The fact that Turkey bought that those S-400s from Russia without caring about American threats. All of this really tells us something. I think countries, and I, I this is what I believe, and I, I think this can be evinced just by the actions of these countries. I think countries like Turkey, like Germany, and maybe even uh, France, I think they really see NATO as a means to an end. I think they see NATO as just a nice security umbrella, but given the opportunity to break away and to revolt, they will, especially countries like Turkey and Germany, um, with the fact that for decades Germany has been very close to Iran, regardless of how much America hates Iran. Um, that really tells me something. So really, if you think about it, Biden is a reflection of America, a dying, old, decrepit, senile empire. Anyway, you guys just heard some Theo Logi. God bless. Red.
реки полные воды Это мой придуманный мир Это мой вольный шлях И носит контейнер до пир И рамонки на своих узнах Это мой дурацкий дэнс Это мой натуре дах Это мой сын буддийский сенс И рамонки на твоих узнах Это мой сын буддийский сенс И рамонки на твоих узнах